Chairman Jimmy Don Acock is a veterinarian from, uh, well, I say Colleen, but you're really from the greater Colleen metropolitan area, right? You're not actually a citizen of Colleen. <laughs> oh, you are? Okay, I thought you lived just outside of town. I uh, went to, graduated from Moody High School, I uh, went to AM, and got a doctor of veterinary medicine. Uh, it's just, you're, you raise cattle with your bride, your beautiful bride who's going to be in town today and is chairman of the House Public Education. Now, committees haven't been announced in the House yet, but uh, everybody is thinking and hoping that you're going to get renewed in your position by the speaker, so we, we agree with that. Uh, chairman Seliger uh, served last session. He's from Amarillo. He was mayor of Amarillo. Uh, he grew up in Border, Texas. Now, have, how many of y'all have visited Border, Texas? You know, they have a hat in border, they say nine exits right off the freeway, which are really just streets that intersect with the highway that goes through the middle of town, I think. Uh, but he had to go to Dartmouth. Urban attitude. Uh, he had to go to Dartmouth for some reason, some unexplicable reason. He couldn't stay in Texas to get his education. Uh, but he served last year, uh, last session as chairman of higher education in the Senate. He's going to do the same again. Uh, Jim Murphy. I uh, was elected in 07. He's from West Houston. Uh, he's worked uh, on key legislation on workforce, uh, job opportunities for students, and tax incentives, research and development. I think that was your major piece of legislation, which the business community is very, very appreciative. He's been uh, given awards by uh, TAB and Right to Life, National Coalition for Capital, and other organizations. He serves, uh, he's chair of the subcommittee on manufacturing, he serves on the higher education committee. So we have a very distinguished uh, group this morning to talk about, obviously, something that's so critical and important to all of us, education slash workforce. Um, you know, I think that uh, you, you uh, were the author in the House and the other members supported House Bill 5, uh, which gave us a change in direction. Uh, can each one of you just tell us how you think, I mean, it's still early on, obviously, uh, but what sort of changes, if any, do you think we're seeing out there uh, with the local school districts based on your legislation, Chairman Acock. Well, thank you for having us first. Uh, two sessions in a row, you've got to be up early, so it's working. Uh, actually, House Bill 5 has rolled out smoother than I thought it would. Uh, there's lots of changes in the graduation plan and the curriculum stuff, and, and including a lot of the the vocational technical opportunities that HB5 is all about. And I think the thing that's most encouraging is the consortiums that have been formed, or four or five districts can go together and, and do a technical vocational group together. Or they'll partner with the community college or some other grouping of people. Not everybody can go out and have their own empire when they can't afford it. So I think the most encouraging thing about it is that these consortiums that are formed for the kids involved in vocational technical training. And what we're finding, just like yesterday, I got a clip from Roscoe, Texas, our own community college guys. Really encouraging because this young man had pretty much said he was going to either drop out of school or go to the military or do something. And because he, he now has found a field of interest in robotics and electronics, he's now college bound. And so I think that's what we're seeing. Uh, we're really encouraged by all that. Sir? It, it, it's interesting, Chairman Acock talks about Roscoe. Their goal, if they've not accomplished it, they probably will this year, that every student will be in early college high school. Every student in Roscoe ISD. Uh, the rollout of, of House Bill 5 has almost universally been, been logged by school districts all over the state of Texas. And it touches on so many important things from high stakes testing to electives to, to career and technical. And it's interesting because is, and, and I represent 82 school districts, and so I get to talk to a, a pretty broad cross-section, that you have schools as small as the Glasscock County Independent School District that is going to offer all five of, of the pathways or endorsements for a small school district. With more electives in school that we've probably seen in 15 or 20 years, my alma mater, Border High School, even though they may not readily claim that as I do, is going to offer electives in robotics, uh, computer game development, and culinary arts. Because now they have the option to do that with the, those electives, all workforce oriented. And, and the things that we're going to see around the state in workforce preparation 
are going to be absolutely incredible and innovative, and, and it's really exciting. And, and Chairman Aycock deserves just so much credit and gets it from the school districts in my district, but they don't know you. <laughs> I do the best I can. <laughs> Mr. Murphy. Yeah, I want to. Um, yeah, I want to join in and, and say, is this working? Yeah, there we go. Okay. I just want to join in and say uh, thank you to Jimmy Dodd for his leadership on House Bill 5, which um, I think has rolled out smoother than, than I thought as well. Although I would say um, maybe not as quickly, uh, the, the change embraced. And so we, we turned the corner, I think, for education in Texas in a, in a very significant way, in a fundamental way. And I think it's going to really uh, translate into a lot of empowerment. So one thing is that uh, Senator Seliger and I have chaired a committee looking at workforce preparation <coughs> And not always is the infrastructure there to help people transition with that empowerment we've given to parents and to students to understand what are the career paths, what are the options, what are the degrees, what do they cost, where would I get them. We're still kind of struggling with, with those parts, and they are coming together, and there are, there are pockets of, of excellence, but, but it really comes at a time where people have uh, embraced in a larger sense this notion of this, what was vocational ed, and kind of poo-pooed, um, Wall Street Journal, y'all may have seen, there was a front page article about a month ago about the $140,000 welder. Have you read about this? So we posted that on my Facebook page and we said, see? And this guy writes me and says, well, he's working 70 hours a week. I'm like, well, if you want to make 140 grand, that's what you got to do, you know? So, so I'm sorry, his base, his base salary is only 75, you know, that's terrible. And, and, uh, so, so we have now kind of attuned people that these, these options are there. And so one of the things that we'll be working um, this session particularly is to try to make sure all those mechanisms are in place for as many of those uh, community college districts and, and uh, uh, public school districts as, as we can. So uh, while you've got the mic in your hand, why don't you start, both of y'all I would ask, both Senator Seldra as well, to talk about the results of your committee. What suggestions did y'all come up with? What are the top one or two in your mind uh, that you're going to be talking about to your fellow uh, legislators? Well, I'll mention one because I want to defer to the Senator because my bills have to pass the Senate as well. So uh, what, one thing we did find is a breakdown, uh, and that sounds negative, a gap, if you will, uh, in the world of counseling. And that is to say that we have a lot of counselors who are prepared to talk to you about the, the grief of the loss of your parent, and, and that's important. What we really want you to do is understand what your career options are and what you'd be good at and what they, you know, where would you go to get those degrees and the fact that as a seventh, eighth, ninth grader, you've got to start making some choices and decisions that are pretty significant for you. And so we need career counselors. And I will tell you, there are some districts, I represent the Spring Branch School District in Houston, one of the districts, and, and they have rolled out a very large, very robust career counseling program using a lot of people from industry, so they aren't necessarily paying all these people, so they're cheap, right? Uh, but they also understand who really knows what's going on in the workforce. And so this notion of a, a new element of career academic counseling has to come into play. I, I'd love to say everybody has uh, two parents at home that have been to college and totally get it and know what's out there. That's not the case. And uh, so this, this is something we're going to need to really work on. And Bill, what we're uh, wrestling with is, is this something we should mandate? Should we incentivize it? Should we encourage it? Should we throw some money at it? That's where we're kind of where the rubber meets the road. Right now, as I understand it, the ratio is about one to four hundred uh, for counselors in Texas in general. Yeah, and, and those I mean, people that's pretty were, much an impossible task. No, it's impossible because all they're doing is standardized testing, and maybe you see your counselor once or twice a semester. Right. Yeah. If, if then. So, Senator, so, do you think there's going to be an effort made? I mean, would you support uh, more money specifically for counselors? I would not earmark the money. I think if we put it in the basic program, a lot of the school districts realize that they need uh, counselors. It's up to them to determine what their manpower needs and for them to pay for them. Spring Branch is a good example of something else, too, where they're bringing a lot of people into that counseling circle, teachers and, and administrators, and realize that, that House Bill 5 has a lot of moving parts. And if you have this young person who wants to go to A&M and major in engineering, not all those endorsements in high school are for him, but he needs to know which ones are there, which courses he needs to take, which electives will enhance his efforts, and, and it's going to be counselor heavy. Um, what the things that Jim and I learned in our committee is relevance and articulation when it comes to, is that? Absolutely. Yeah. Relevance is to make sure that 
those career and technical offerings are relevant to the workforce. We don't want to be too regional about that, but it's clear that, that for some local industries that they need certain things, prerequisites. And that's why in House Bill 5, there is, is the provision that local school districts and local industry can develop their own courses that have to meet the requirements of Texas Essential Knowledge and Skills, but can use materials provided by industry, and they can use, they can have internships by local industry, and that's how you get people when Toyota and Lockheed Martin came and spoke to us. They talked about the things that they had planned. I'm not going to hire every kid who goes through those sort of experiences, but they're going to have sort of a pre-trained workforce. Phillips Petroleum at their, their refinery in Borger, I think, got to partner with uh, Borger Independent School District and West Texas High School for internships there. So people can get experience in things like safety engineering and maintenance and things like that. When we talk about articulation, young people, what they learn in high school and those career and technical endeavors that they undertake in high school need to articulate with the community college and with local industry to make sure that they're relevant and, and we get our money's worth out of their workforce preparation. So there are a lot of, of good things in there. It's going to take a lot more work. It, it probably hasn't been addressed completely uh, legislatively, but I think we've made a lot of progress. Uh, Chairman Aycock, uh, when, when, you know, the average plumber today in Texas, I'm told, is 57 years old. Uh, and at the same time, that uh, a renewed emphasis on career technology education in high school, uh, we're certainly supportive of that. But at the same time, these kids have got to go beyond high school. And for most jobs, they've got to go to a community college, get a certificate, get a two-year degree or more. So how do we ensure that we do both? In other words, we give a basic, solid uh, career foundation, which can be built upon, but it's not the end of the road. And at the same time, uh, prepare them academically to be successful at a community college or beyond. I think your organization has, has sort of led the charge on being ready for, for whatever is next. I, I started talking in terms of what I call, uh, it's not unique to me, but what is now being called stackability. Yep. Where you, you show a child a level of success as a high school or even as a middle school, and they succeed and say, oh, I can do that. And they go on up to the next step. Oh, I succeed, I can do that. And, and they move on. I think the notion that we've had in the past was that you had to graduate from high school, go straight to a four-year college, or somehow something was wrong. And a lot of kids just weren't, weren't managing to make that one-time big leap. I think what we're seeing, actually, as this begins to play out, is more kids buying into the stackability notion. I, I can succeed as a, as a ninth grader in robotics. Oh, I might want to be an electronic engineer. Um, I might want to be a computer programmer. I think that what we're actually seeing is it's going to work to encourage students to go on to that next step, whatever it is. And I think what we'll see eventually is people get that associate's degree and go on for, for bachelor's and go on for advanced training. Uh, a discussion that was hard originally when we started talking about this concept was because we were so ingrained that everybody had to make that leap all at one time. Right. And, and we were so accustomed to that leap being a single leap. And I think the stackability concept is probably going to be more, more encouraging to people in the long run. Uh, one of the areas.